storm. Tragedy rocked the country with the drowning of a seven-year-old girl. The deputy prime minister revealed that two days before the general election, millions of dollars worth of contracts were signed. And the New Providence landfill is an urgent health hazard. This according to PAHO. We've got those stories and others. I'm your host, Krishna Virgil, and this is the Tribune's Top 5. The family of little Elnora Bullard are left with only precious memories after the seven-year-old child drowned at a family picnic over the weekend. Fernanda Bullard, the mother of the seven-year-old girl who was believed to have drowned during a family picnic on Labor Day, said she's overwhelmed with grief at the loss of her baby, but finds comfort in knowing that her daughter is now in the arms of the Lord. The body of Elnora Bullard was pulled from waters off Awaki on Saturday, less than 24 hours after she was reported missing by family members. The little girl, affectionately called Mama, was at a picnic on Long Wharf Beach with her mother's relatives when she went missing between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. Friday. At first, family members thought Elnora had been abducted and sent out flyers and information on social media pleading with members of the public to assist in locating the young girl. Elnora's father, Livingston Bullard, made an emotional plea begging her kidnappers to let his baby girl go and asked people to keep him and his family in their prayers. Relatives also formed a search party to comb the areas near the beach as well as the water. Early Saturday morning, the Royal Bahamas Police Force as well as the Royal Bahamas Defense Force joined in the search for the missing girl. Tragically, shortly after 1 p.m., a volunteer and RBDF officer saw a body floating in the water on the eastern end of Awaki. The body was pulled ashore. Police did not release the identity of the victim, but family members confirmed it was Elnora, who was pronounced dead on the scene. Delinquent former and sitting parliamentarians have been given three weeks to file disclosures or face the court for breaking the law, according to Press Secretary Anthony Newbold on Tuesday. The deadline imposed by Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis affects more than 20 MPs and follows a report in the Tribune that revealed a handful of parliamentarians did not make a single disclosure last term. Mr. Newbold said this week that a number of parliamentarians did not disclose for the entire five years, but the number was not less than six. He said, quote, all of those members of parliament sitting in the last house, as at December 31st, 2016, who did not disclose by March 1st, 2017, the prime minister has given them three weeks in which to file the disclosure form, or he's going to turn that file in with their names over to the attorney general and instruct him to do what the law prescribes. They could face a fine of $10,000 or two years in prison or both, or confiscation of land if land is involved. I can tell you from having seen those documents that more than 20 MPs, former and present, have three weeks in which to file. Some of them who were sitting from 2012, I'd say about six of them, they didn't file at all over the five-year period. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next three-week period." End quote. Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist revealed to the House of Assembly this week that days ahead of the general election, millions of dollars worth of contracts were signed contributing to the national debt. On Wednesday, Mr. Turnquist underscored what he called the egregious fiscal mismanagement of the Progressive Liberal Party. There are also hundreds of people employed just days before the country went to the polls, Mr. Turnquist said. He explained that among these questionable hires were 41 people in Athens who were given the impression that their new jobs were on a long-term basis. However, the finance minister said the workers were only contracted for a three-month period. The minister said when the workers' contracts expire, the government will have to make a decision on what to do next. Mr. Tungwes further responded to the official opposition's criticisms over the government's projection that it would have to borrow $722 million to cover inherited outstanding bills, along with the costs associated with running the country moving forward. The Menace administration now has to obtain parliamentary approval for the emergency borrowing through a resolution in the amount of $400 million that will allow the government to clear the backlog of payments owing and those unfunded commitments, Mr. Turnquist said. He said any criticism coming from the PLP in this regard was disingenuous and an indictment on the opposition party. The government's payroll increased by $10 million as new employees were hired in the final five months of the former Christie administration. State Minister for Public Service and National Insurance Brenzo Rule said during the contribution to the budget debate in the House of Assembly Thursday. He said that the Christie administration hired 6,500 new public service workers during the past five years. He suggested that the new administration will take a more rigorous approach to hiring people and that some who were hired under questionable circumstances under the former administration could be terminated. He said, quote, some burdens we cannot carry at the public's expense. 
The public service in salaries alone ballooned by $10 million between December 2016 and May of this year, he said. That's $10 million new employment, nothing to do with hurricane repairs. Indeed, the public service has ballooned by 6,500 new employees during the watch of the previous administration, end quote. To highlight the questionable nature of some hiring practices, he revealed that under the previous administration, a security guard was hired to guard a police station, and such was those and such was the loose nature of the process that some people were hired but never received a salary, he said. Given his experience in the public sector as a former teacher and a former undersecretary in the Ministry of Works, he said the hiring process under the former administration departed from tradition. On April 29th, the Pan American Health Organization released to the then Christie government a report over the New Providence landfill. However, this report was not made public until the Minutes administration took office. The New Providence landfill has been classified as an urgent public health hazard presenting a chronic health risk to those operating in and around its vicinity. According to a report compiled by the Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization and submitted to the former Christie administration at the end of April. Among the findings detailed in the nearly 30-page report, Pan American Health Organization and World Health Organization called for several short-term interventions to be used until long-term sustainable plans could be identified by the government. Meanwhile, former Environment Minister Kenry Dorsett denied accusations that the former government sought to suppress the damning report. Speaking to the Tribune, Mr. Dorsett said the report was emailed to him at the height of the 2017 general election season, a period in which he said he was not in office. As a result, he insisted that he did not see the report until after the Progressive Liberal Party suffered a brutal loss at the polls to the Free National Movement. The former cabinet minister said it was nonsense for anyone to claim that the defeated government had attempted to hide the report, adding that it was that administration that had asked PAHO to conduct an investigation in the wake of a March 5th fire at the landfill. Mr. Dorsett said the report didn't reveal anything new and it was now up to the Ms. administration to act on the chronic landfill problems. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's so you can. Just log on to our website at www.tribune242.com, like us on Facebook, the Tribune News Network, send us a tweet at Tribune242, or subscribe to our YouTube page, Tribune242.